centuries, mankind has sought shelter. Our early ancestors looked to nature to protect them from the elements and wild animals we share this earth with. Dangerous. So, mankind developed the will and the need to survive, and probably learned from the animals they feared. A bear, a bear will find itself a nice, deep, dark cave somewhere and tuck itself in for the long, harsh winter months, safe from the elements, the animals, the danger. So, what better to do than find yourself a nice, big cave? A cave big enough for your entire family, a place where you can feel safe, secure, a place where you can belong. The only problem is, all the caves have a resident bear. So, the time comes when the men have to take the biggest stick and the sharpest stone and they have to venture into that deep, dark cave in search of the beast that lies within. And when they find it, they have to summon up all that strength they knew they had somewhere and deliver the fatal blow to the bear. What about the bear, though? Big guy walks into a bar. He just didn't see it down there. <laughs> big guy walks into a bar. Three guys start a fight with him just because he's big. <laughs> Big guy walks into a bar. The locals thought it was an earthquake. <laughs> you see, it's not the bear's fault that he was quietly sleeping in the darkest corner of the cave. The bear like all things, just wants to survive. It just wants to go about its routine. It just wants to be itself. Until one day, it's rudely awakened. Dangerous. Big guy goes round his mate's house, sits on a chair and breaks it. <laughs> Big guy goes out on a date. He has to take a stack of yellow pages for the goodnight kiss. <laughs> Big guy goes out to buy a car. He accidentally buys a mini. <laughs> a mini! <laughs> Have you ever provoked an animal? Ever backed a cat into a corner? It doesn't like it. It's intimidated. It's scared. Its back arches, its teeth bared. It's ready to rip, scratch and tear its way through hell to save its own skin. Now, imagine the bear's reaction. It's just how the rudest wake-up call of its life. And now, it's ready to rip, scratch, and tear. It's ready to take up its rocks and its sticks and fight back against the vermin who have crept into the darkness of its home. And if the bear escapes from this fight with its life intact, it's forced out of its home forced to wander the wilderness. You see, the first time I met her, it was in a park. 
It was a cold day, so I was in a rush. When I noticed her out the corner of my eye, this dark shape in the corner of the frozen pond. There was a crowd gathered around, so I decided to go over and help. But as I did, the crowd dispersed. And I slowly reached down and pulled her out of the freezing water. Her school uniform was soaking wet. She just stood there, was dripping constantly. So, I invited her to come back to mine. I mean, I had to. I couldn't just leave her there. She would have froze to death. So, we went back to mine and I gave her a towel and some spare clothes and I was standing in the kitchen making her a hot drink when she walked in. My clothes almost engulfing her. And then I took her through to the front room and I sat her down on the sofa. And we talked. We talked for hours about everything and anything she could think of. It turned out that she had broken up with her boyfriend and he had pushed her into the pond. The bear, the bear wanders the wilderness looking for a place to lay his head, a place to call home, more than home, a place like his cave, a place where he, he feels safe and secure in the deep darkness, a place where he can be himself and where he can just belong. You see, one day there was a knock at the door. And it was her again. She just wanted to pay a visit. So, of course, I let her come in and she sat down again. She just talked and talked. She started telling me all about her latest project, something to do with biology. Apparently she had spent most of the day dissecting small animals. You see, I didn't mind. I didn't mind that she just sat there and talked. But the neighbours, the neighbours soon started to talk. Have you heard about him in number 12? Bears. Bears are a carnivorous animal. But they get about 90% of their dietary food energy from vegetable matter. You see, bears use their size to scare off smaller animals. 